In this video, we're going to go over the internal um, work that's being done on print three. Um, I've already done the OD and the facing on this program ahead of time. We've already covered a couple of prints of that, so you should be able to do that on your own. Then we're going to talk about drilling and boring this particular part. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go in and set up a couple of tools. Right now I have one and two, which is my rougher and finisher. I'm going to go ahead and set up tool three as a drill. I'm going to make this an inserted drill, one inch diameter, using the offset three. And when we're using an indexable drill, on a regular drill it doesn't ask this, but on, a, on an index, inserted drill, it asks you what the max offset is. When we go to program in the holes block, you'll see that we can run that drill off center by a certain amount, but that amount can exceed whatever you put in this particular field here. I'm gonna put in an eighth of an inch, even though I'm not gonna run it off of there probably, but I always typically put something in there. There are drills out there now that will bore a hole or drill a hole within a range. So whatever the diameter of the drill is up to something else and you run that off center to do so. I'll go ahead and put some surface feed in here. Um, coolant, we'll just go ahead and turn that on primary. Feed per rev, I'll just put some stuff in here. Six inch tool length. Max of so also on an indexable drill, we can use that tool to bore the hole or drill the hole and then pull that tool off center and use it for rough boring if we want. I'm going to go ahead and put 60 thousandths for a max depth of cut. I'm not going to use this tool in that manner, but if I was, um, this is where the information for what I would use for my, my standard cutting information if I were going to be boring this. And I'm going to go ahead and use a 55 degree diamond as my insert. We'll say it's a number three and we'll do the typical minus five degrees. All right, so we've set up all of our information for that particular drill. I'm going to go ahead and do a tool four and make that a boring bar. Max depth of cut, I'm going to make 60 thou. The geometry offsets, so my um, orientation and tool tip radius are okay here. If I wanted to change those, I'd go to my geometry offsets and change them there. Because we're boring, I always, again, if we go back to the first video where I talked about this, I always put the um, orientation kind of in the, whatever the image of how the tool is going to approach the part. So in this case, in a boring bar, I'm going to come up from the bottom to do my boring versus coming down from the top um, on a turning tool. So this is what our orientation is going to be kind of up and to the left. Let's go ahead and give it some surface feet, coolant. I'm going to use a 30 or a 55 degree diamond here as well using tool th or three and minus five degrees on the lead angle. So now we have tools three for our, bore, our drill and tool four for our boring bar. So we'll go back to our program. You can see, I'll go ahead and run this real quick. You can see that I've already faced the part, roughed and finished turned. So that is the part up to the ID work that needs to be done. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my program I'm going to go to my block three, which is our last block in the program currently. I'm going to do next block. We're under turning. We're going to select hole. The tool we're going to use is tool three. Yes, I want to use the speeds and feeds defined in the tool setup. Now, we still have to give it our rapid positions, but it's a little different. It's going to automatically go to the center of the part in X but we have to give it something in Z. So I'm gonna do a point two. So I'm gonna wrap it to point two in front of the part. And then I'm going to move into my Z star. I'm just gonna put a point one here. It just has to be something positive, something in front of the part so we don't run into it. Our final depth, this part was three quarters of an inch. I'm just gonna go down 
0.8, so I can break through. And this is where we would put the max offset, or the offset. If I wanted to run this tool off of center a little bit, this is where I put the value. And again, that value cannot exceed whatever I put in my tool uh, geometry page. But I'm gonna run it right on center, so we're gonna leave that at zero. I'm gonna compensate for the tip, meaning I do want it to break through. Using the angle on that insert, I want it to go all the way through the part. I'm gonna use standard cycle. I don't wanna chip it or uh, peck it, do chip breaking or anything like that. So I'm just gonna use standard. It's gonna start at, start at my Z start and go all the way through the part in one shot. And then when it's done, it's gonna to return to Z start, the rapid position, or whatever it is that you pick here and tell it to do. So we'll go ahead and drill, watch that drill real quick. There's our tool came in and we've drilled the hole all the way through the part. We'll watch that go again. Okay, now that we've got it drilled, we're gonna go back into our program here and we're going to go to the next block, turning and profile so we can bore the ID on this part. So doing a bore is gonna be just like doing our OD turn, only instead of getting larger as we go back typically towards the chuck in the diameters, we're going to get smaller as we go towards the chuck. So we're gonna start with tool four that we have set up as our boring bar. Yes, I wanna use the speeds and feeds from the tool. Our uh, orientation, tip, diameter, speeds and feeds, everything came in. I'm going to rough this out ahead of time and then go back and finish it. So I want to turn rough in the z-axis direction using 60 thousandths depth of cut per side. Now, on the approach clearance and retract clearance, we haven't changed those yet because it's we've always been on the outside of the part and we could pull away 100 thousandths between pecs and it wasn't a problem. On the ID, depending on what the diameter of the hole is and what diameter boring bar you have, once we bore back and pull down, we may run into the backside of the tool. So I'm gonna reduce these to 20 thou. I use 20 thou usually on everything unless I need to even restrict it more than that. And I'm gonna do that on both the approach and on the retract clearance. Now here we have in version 11 software, you should have a checkbox here for spindle harmonic control. If I check that, I can then tell the control for a period of time in seconds, I want you to reduce or increase the RPM programmed in the program by this percentage. So if I'm getting some vibration because of the length of the tool, the harmonics in that and the size of the part or whatever, and I need to vary that RPM a little bit, then I can do that by checking this box, putting again, the number of seconds, the, the duration of time, and then what percentage of the programmed RPM do you want it to run at? So I can enter a hole a little bit slower as I get back towards the back in the chuck where I'm a little more solid, I can speed up or vice versa. So that's what this spindle harmonic control will do for us. All right, so that's our process tab. Let's go to the geometry tab. We have to put our rapid positions in here. So we've been typically adding 200 thousandths to the diameter of our stock and starting 200 thousandths in front because we were on the OD of the part. Well, now we're on the ID and we've talked about this before. I'm gonna make sure I keep that rapid position somewhere inside the part, so smaller diameter than my ID work, and I'm gonna start in the front. We've got a one inch hole drilled through this part now, so I'm gonna to go to 900 thousandths and 0.2. So that's my rapid two position when I get done, get done with my profile. Now, as I said, we're gonna start larger and work our way smaller as we go back towards the chuck. So I have a start position. I'm gonna start at one inch 750, just an arbitrary number. We have a one inch diameter hole already drilled. We're gonna bore that to one inch 128. We have a 50 thousandths chamfer that we're gonna put on the front of this part as well. So I'm gonna start inch and three quarter, 100 thousandths in front of the part. I'm gonna put 10 thousandths per side on all my di turn diameters, my chamfers and radiuses, and 5 thousandths on my face allowance. 
Now we just program this profile just like we would on an OD. So I'm going to go to my next segment. I'm going to turn into the face of the part. So I'm going to turn to zero. Next segment, I'm going to face down to our 1.128, which is our final diameter. When I get there, I'm going to put a chamfer of 50 thousandths in 45 degrees. And then I'm going to do a turn all the way through the part of 0.8. Because I started with a turn, I still have to end with that face. I need my perpendicular moves. So I'm going to come down to 990. We have a one inch hole that we started with. I'm going to come down just 10 thousandths below that. So now if I draw this, there's my hole and the boring bar came in. Let's look at that from the side and I'll make it opaque. So you can see there's our chamfer and our bore. There's the hole and the chamfer. Now we've roughed this out. The only thing left to do is to finish it. So we're going to go into our review screen. We're going to highlight our block five multiple block functions and create a finished profile. I'm going to use the same tool. I don't have to change tools. It switches it to a finish cutter comp left. Again, we're behind the tool pushing it. We're on the left side of the cut and it has removed all of our um, stock allowance. So if I go to draw this again, I'll get drill, rough bore, finish bore. So that completes this part. Hopefully you were able to follow that and that you were also able to do that OD turning on your own.